When they had children, guess what? That curse will be upon them. When they had children, guess what? That curse will be upon them. So on and so forth, so on and so forth, to the point where today we're walking around in the curse, just like the brother that had walked up. What did he say? People ain't cursed. Did you hear what he said? He said, he said, nah, we we not a cursed people. To the point we're walking around now, calling ourselves black, calling ourselves Negroes, African American, Hispanic. Yes. 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 Our people are still cursed in the earth, right? Even if you guys trying to enlighten people, even though you guys are enlightened, you guys are still punished. Right we're, make, we're making as a people. We'll never rise above the respectability of our people. So as long as our sisters are, 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 are out there and, and, and smacking people in the face working at them, being promiscuous, not clothing themselves, not dealing rightfully, not being respectful to the black man. You understand? We're not in rulership above. Yes, me as a people, all of us, we still a cursed people. We're making changes for our people, but together, we're still, we, we're, we'll never rise above our people. You know Oprah, she went across seas and she wanted to go to a jewelry store, I think it was, and they wouldn't let her in the store. Oprah Winfrey, the rich woman, you understand? The own network and all of that. You know how they treated her? Just like they treat our people. She couldn't rise above that. She couldn't rise above. So yes, we're still a cursed people. Now when we keep God's commandments, it provides benefits to us. When we keep God's commandments, it helps us prosper. But it's not gonna overturn the curses just like that from doing it. And I'll give you an example. Give me Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you an example of a law that we all keep out here, right? Because we keep the laws in the Bible and we teach these laws to other brothers and sisters that live within our community. Because we understand that if we all can submit ourselves to them, over time, we will change the curse into a blessing. All right, that's what will happen. Read what you got. This is the book of Deut This is the book of Exodus, chapter twenty-two and verse sixteen. This is law. Come on. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, you know what it means to entice a maid. That means to take her to the movies, take her out to dinner, you know, get her attention, speak those smooth words to her. You know how brothers do, right? Come on. And lie with her. Then you have sex with her. Come on. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Wait, wait a minute. Read that again. He shall surely. No, he 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 might. He shall surely. He, he, if he if he likes how good it was. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He don't have a choice. That's law. So if a man entice a maid, right? Wine and diner, take out to dinner. Then he has sex with her. What did he just? What did he just do? Who did she just become to him? There you go. So you, now you're going to get paperwork. That's who you with for the rest of your life. You understand? Yeah. You think that would be beneficial for our families today? With all the broken families that we have, sure. the fatherless homes, sure. right? Yeah. That's law. We don't read that in the Ten Commandments. But it's there. You know what law it is? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. Yeah. It's there, right? Yeah. But the, the churches are not teaching us these things. I can't learn these commandments going to a church. I'll never hear a pastor say that in a church. I've been to church for 20 plus years. I never heard a pastor read that scripture. Why? That's not gonna help our community? Sure it is. It's gonna help our community, right? So yes, over time, is that gonna, if, if I keep that, is that gonna change my whole community? No, but it's gonna make a difference. Yeah. It's surely, but you know, over time, it's gonna make things better. I know, I know, I know you're trying to lead, get back to your wife. Well, I, I got more questions, but I, I need to go back to my wife. Understood, understood. I got one more, but I'm not sure where it's gonna go if I ask you this. What you got? Um, because we seem to be starting right at this point in the Bible. Well, oh, that's not, yeah, like there's things that transpired before the tribe of Israel, right? Yes. And I also read in the Bible where there's rituals where like, they became priests and shaved off their heads, right? Yes. Yes. So they cut their hair off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of some, I guess, call it a ritual. I guess. Yeah, bow. Part, they ended their bow. They would. They would uh, uh, shave that because they grew their hair long, right? So at the end of that, they would shave it off. Not bald though. Not bald. Not exactly. bald though. They like, would like, like essentially like, if I was to grow an afro, right? 
and then I don't want to have afro no more, so I wouldn't shave my head bald. I would just simply cut the hair off and now have a shortcut. That's essentially what they did. What you're talking about is a vow of a Nazarite, but they never shaved their head bald because that would be sin against God. Right. That's how we know. Get Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 1. That's the scripture that he's thinking of. We'll read it for you. All right? And it says, take you a barber's razor, right? I think it's Ezekiel 5 and 1. Yes, sir. All right? And like the officer said here, what that means is they had long hair and they cut it off. Today, we think of that as Mr. Clean, shave it off. That's not what, you know how we know? Because the Bible doesn't contradict itself. We just read that you can't shave it bald. You can't do that. So when you cut your hair off with a razor, you can cut it with a razor, you just can't shut, you can't cut it down silky like the Egyptians did, where they would have one patch of hair on their head, everything else clean, shaved, bald, you know what I'm talking about? We, we see uh, 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 historical pictures of that. Yeah. Read you got? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter five and verse one. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. So they cut their hair, they had so much hair you could weigh it. You understand? So they cut their hair off, but they didn't cut. Yeah, this is it right here. Now this ain't a real Egyptian, all right? <laughs> real Egyptian was black, right? This is this is how they depicted them today. But that's how that's a hairstyle. Mm -hmm. That's that's unlawful. Mm -hmm. We got these laws. Remember when we came out of Egypt? You know what I'm saying? When we came out of Egypt, we were given these laws to separate us and make a difference from the Egyptians and us because we weren't supposed to be moving that way. The laws existed before. Israel was a nation. The laws started with Adam. So yes, we agree with you on that. We had laws during the time of Adam and, and after that. To Cain and Abel, laws existed, right? Laws existed there. So well, I was speaking of a Pacific, I forgot what we're reading. It wasn't in Ezekiel, it was like again in the Old, in the Old, Testament, the Old Testament, early on, somewhere between Genesis and Exodus. About them saving air or yeah, it's part of a um, yeah. I, I, what I was talking about, you know, where it's at numbers, it's talking about a vow of a Nazarite, but again, that's not talking about cutting their hair off. I'm not shaving it bald, excuse me. It's talking about like, I, like, I, like I gave the example if, if he was going afro, right? Because part of the Nazarite was you grow your hair out, right? And you, but it was other things that came, we couldn't uh, eat anything or drink anything that came from a vine, you couldn't eat raisins, you couldn't eat grapes, you couldn't drink wine, you couldn't do those things, right. And, and that was for you to, to present yourself before the Lord. And then at the end of your vow, you cut your hair. That's what you're talking about. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Book of Numbers, chapter 6 and verse 21. This is the law of the Nazarite, who hath vowed, and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation. Besides that, his... Jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. Jump up, jump up the verse, uh, verse 4. Verse 4, all the days of his, verse 3, verse three. he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. Right, so he vowed all to separate himself from certain things, to commit himself wholly unto the Lord. Read. And shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquors of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dry. All the days of his separation, so however long his vow it is, all the days of the separation. Shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. And he can't cut his hair at all. Like that's why I said that if I, so if that, what that would look like today is, you vow that vow, and from there you don't eat those things, and you grow your hair out, right? Read, like an apple. Until until what the days be fulfilled. Until he fulfills his vow, then he does what? In in the which he separate he separated himself unto the Lord. Uh -huh. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair 
of his head grow. Right, he should let the locks of his head grow. And then after that, he can cut it. But it doesn't say shave it bald. They understood they couldn't shave their head bald. They understood they couldn't shave their beard off. So that's that's not what that's talking about, right? Yeah, I, I know what I'm doing now. I wasn't, what I'm talking about, I wasn't referring to the Bible. This is from a book I read about, it was either Christianity before Christ or either uh, oh, okay. ancient, uh, or the ancient, or the understood. ancient Egypt. Or the ancient, understood. Ancient Egyptian history or something like that. Okay. Yes, James, um, something, I can't think of his last name. Right. But I was reading that book, and that's the, they talked about that, that right. process. Right, civilizations and what they did the before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, God said, uh, Leviticus 18, I think it's one. Remember, God said, don't do the things that the Egyptians did. Because you see, you referenced ancient Egypt. They did shave their head, but they also did, their men also wore skirts and dressed like women. They also indulged in cross-dressing and, and homosexuality. They did those things. God told us not to do those things. And even though they may have existed before, Moses and so on and so forth, but God said don't do them. Read what you got. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord God. Read. After the doings of the land of Egypt. So everything you learned in Egypt, shaving your head bald, laying down with the same uh, uh, gender, you know, cross-dressing, eating unclean things, whatever uh, uh, culture you in ancient Egypt, don't do those things. Read. Wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. You can't do those things. And he just kind of goes through a whole list. Was that it? Don't get random. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, and after the doings of not just the Egyptians, but other nations of people, read. Whether I bring you, shall ye not do. Don't do those things because, like I said, one thing they were doing was homosexuality. But laying down with the woman is made to procreate. Can you procreate with another man? So that's clear you shouldn't do that, right? And it's spirits that come behind these things. Cross-dressing will push that spirit, right? So there was things that he didn't want them to do. That's why he told them don't do those things. But yeah, of course they existed, you know, but we shouldn't do those things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man, you take it. Come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. So God is telling the Israelites, if you keep my commandments, this is what happen. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God said, if you kept his commandments, he's going to be above all the other nations. And he's going to be above, not equal to above. But the flip side, being a parent, if your kids do well, you can warn them, pat on the back, whatever, give them a gift, gift. But if they do opposite what you say, you have to have it. A consequence, there you go. That's the same way the most time with kids do it, right? Verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, don't listen to his commandments, what's going to happen? That all these curses 
shall come upon thee and overtake thee. going to be a curse. It's a lot of things. That's what he said. You're going to take on curse and actually don't keep his commandments. All right? Look at this. I'm telling y'all that we're still here. But are we, a, are we a blessed people as a nation? Are we a curse people? Look around just take them. Where do we sit in this place? Yeah. I'm a blessed people. You're blessed? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm Alright, go to verse 16. Verse 16. Curse shall thou be. Go, go to verse 2. It's for the flesh, right? Go to verse 2. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thy be in the city, and blessed shall thy be in the field. Now, in the city that we live in, are we a blessed yes. So, what do most of our people live in all these cities? Right? We live in the ghetto. Right? We have the lowest, you know, the lowest education, the worst education, food deserts. Most of our people shop at grocery stores in the hoods and everything. Right? I thought that's what she said. If I were to look at your situation from an individual perspective, right. because I know the Lord, right. because I follow his word, because I know that he's always with me, even in my bad time. I feel like I am. I am. But when I look at the situation of my people, right. that the people not only here in Houston but around the world, they are the they can easily Right, that's what we're saying as a nation. That's what we're talking about. I know y'all still didn't talk about that's good. But we're talking about as a nation because remember, these curses are on the nation. So, so, he's punished, so it's either a punishment for everybody or a blessing for everybody. So as a people, y'all feel the so-called black people in this, this, this society today, are we above or are we are below? We don't laugh this time. We're treated. We're treated. like what? Exactly. So oh, is every other nation getting pulled over and shot by police? Or knees on their neck, or harassed, or that's what I'm saying. As a nation, we're cursed. We are laughing stock. Nobody takes it seriously. Everybody wants to take what we have and benefit off of it, but don't want us. All right. So we used to laugh at us to have a big lift back in the day. And right. They want to be like us, right? So go to verse um. And this is a curse. We'll go back to the curse. Let me see if this happens to us or just somebody else. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You will serve all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. When did that happen to us? Our sons and daughters will give it to us. Yes. Your son is given. Listen, it's very the being specific is saying another people. That some there's a difference between nations. Okay. Everybody's not the same. There's a difference because God divided the nation. And thine eyes shall look and veil was longing for them all the day long. Remember our roots? Yeah. Kids that got sold? So his mother, his mother went out there on the cross. Read that last part. And there shall be no might in thine hand. You can't say, Master, that's my daughter. Oh, you're right, that's your daughter. Let me not do that. What you say, Daddy? Right, 
Oh, oh, I, and the sad part about it is, you do look like me and give it over to the other people. Now, y'all check this out. Now, y'all check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Read the verse right here. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Yes, I'm going to go back into slavery again. With ships. With what? With ships. ships. Hold on, hold on. We said we're going to go into slavery, but this time we're going on ships. Right. But that's how they go. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Not going to see your homeland again. Go ahead. And there, there, once you get off the ship, he shall be sold unto your enemies. To your who? Enemies. For what? For bond men and bond women. Slave men and slave women. Is that history? I want to take a look at this Look at it had us on these, on these ships, all stacked together, close, chained up, can't move. And you think we had to use the bathroom, you say, hey, I got to use the bathroom. They let you up. What had to happen? You was the right where you were, right you were beside somebody, you was right there. You had to defecate right there. You had to throw up right there. And the woman was on her menstrual, right there. This is what happened to our people. It was like sardines. What's about these sisters would be sold, right? And look at this. Look what happened when you got sold. Y'all should have got your back beating. You got your kids taken away from you. These are curses that the Lord brought us with you. That's it. Defecate. Look at this, look at this. Look, the Black Holocaust. Y'all take this out, the Black Holocaust. In that first prayer. Some of our ancestors could not stand being in such confined quarters and went crazy, screaming, scratching, punching, kicking, throwing up. They were whipped, kicked, and punched by the crew. Their chains rubbing raw of their skin, exposing blood and bone around ankles and wrists. They were embraced, soothed, held, or held down by their comrades. If they did not chill their delirium, they were taken up to the deck and whipped into silence or death. So they tell us that we have, that we are out, you know, we can't control ourselves, right? Imagine the trauma that's being passed down from generation to generation after going through something like this. And they try to make us seem like we're the ones that's crazy. We should be upset, all right? That is over the centuries, the thousands of days at sea, hundreds, thousands of our ancestors would jump overboard rather than continue to suffer in the death ride of the middle passage. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. But this world is going to be destroyed. So the success and the, the wisdom that we need is not of this world. I'm talking about the wisdom that's going to last past this world. It's not what we learn here to make money, to be successful, to have a business. No, that's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is God's commandments. That's what we're reading about. So Moses is telling the people, look, when you keep God's commandments, this is how they'll view you. When you keep God's commandments, this is what you'll become before your enemies that made a tumult against you. You understand? Read off. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. In the sight of all the nations around you. Come on. Which shall hear all these statutes and say. They'll see how you deal with each other according to the law that I gave you. It's, it's many laws. It's not just two or ten. It's hundreds of laws in this Bible that we're supposed to be keeping today. And since we don't, we're cursed. Read on. And say, surely. This great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, are we looked at today as a great nation that's wise and understanding? Is that how we're looked at by all the other nations? We're a great nation that's wise and understanding. Is that how we look today? No, but Muhammad, how did he look at us? Did he look at us like this? I'm gonna show you how he looked at us. This is the uh, Babylon to Timbuktu. We read this already, right? We're gonna read it again. This is Muhammad. After Muhammad became a camel driver, he traveled to remote and intriguing lands. He led his caravans to Persia, Syria, and Egypt, transacting business with merchants of every kind. On his business trips, he met Jews, Christians, and members of other sects. So he met many people on his business trips, right? 
But which one stood out to him? It's going to tell you. He interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religion. He frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent ethnic group. Because he could not read or write, his ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. Muhammad learned and extracted much from the Jewish religion and compounded it with his new religion, Islam. So what does that tell you he learned from the Jews? That they were a very wise and understanding people because during that time, they were keeping God's commandments. How did the Jews end up in Africa where Muhammad was? Historically. How did they end up there? <laughs> Say it again? Well, why, why did they migrate there? Africa? Yeah, why did they migrate to Africa? Why did the Jews migrate to Africa? Say it again? Christ was in Israel. Right? Get Luke chapter. Very good. That's how they ended up there. To escape persecution from who? From the so called white man, the Romans during that time. All right, the temple was destroyed. What happened to all the Israelites? Where did we go? Where did we scatter to? To Africa, very good. That's what the Bible says. Not only does the Bible say it, but it is, it's historically accurate. It's historically accurate. So the Jews didn't start in Africa? Say it again? So the Jews didn't start in Africa? They started in Northeast Africa. But when Jerusalem was destroyed, where did they flee? Most of them fled where? They fled Israel to where? To Africa. They fled Israel to Africa. Yes, they did. That's how we ended up in Africa. That's how when Muhammad came with the religion, and after a few hundred years, the sub-Saharan slave trade came, who were they enslaving? Israelites. Why were there so many Israelites in Africa? Because they fled there. According to the prophecy. Read what you got. Luke chapter 24, verse. You got no one? Yeah, just read on down. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Them that are in Judea. Where is Judea? That's in Israel. Flee where? Where are the mountains? Where are the mountains? Flee to the mountains. Where are the mountains? No. That's in Russia. No. Right? Where are the mountains at during this time? Flee to the mountains. Even now. Even until today. It's, it's south of Israel. South. South. They didn't flee to Europe. You understand? They didn't flee to Europe. There's much persecution going on during that time in Europe. They fled away from persecution. Where? To Africa. Right? Come on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. Don't go back into the land of Jerusalem. Because that land was going to be destroyed. Read on. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which were written may be fulfilled. All of those things written where? Back in Deuteronomy. It was written back in Deuteronomy the same time we was told that we would serve wood and stone. Remember we read that verse 64? If you read a, a, a few verses earlier to that, it's going to tell you that this siege was going to happen to Jerusalem. The same siege that we read about. This is thousands of years before it happened. The reason that we know this Bible is a true book is because of prophecy. Right? Prophecy. That's how we know that. Historically, this happened during the time of 70 AD. Was that it? Read on. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Why does it say, woe to them that are with child, and them that give suck during those days? Yeah, why does it say, woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck during those days? Why does it say that? It's, it's, t it's telling you about this time. Because they make nations. No, it's telling, you, it's telling you about this time in history that's going to come where Jerusalem's going to be destroyed and it's saying, but woe to the woman that's with child and that have little children that's sucking on their breasts. Oh, all the babies got killed. All the babies got killed. Right, so woe to them because are you going to be able to really take care of a, a, of a, of a little child? That little baby going to be able to keep up with you when you're fleeing persecution? What about the time when famine comes? Then what happens? They get hungry. What are you going to eat? No. What are you going to eat? What are the, the humans going to eat? What are the, what are the, what are the, what are the adults going to eat? The men and the women that need to survive. What are they going to eat? What's your little baby going to eat? You got to make a decision. This was all prophesied well before it happened. 
the same time it was prophesied that we worship wood and stone, Islam and Christianity, it was prophesied that Jerusalem would be destroyed. You understand? Read that part again. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Thousands of years later, why does it say, woe to them that are with child and give suck? Do you know the answer now? You know the answer now? You're going to eat your own body. What's your own body you're going to eat? The baby. You understand? You're going to eat your babies. That was a prophecy that you all would be in so low of a state that you would eat your children. Yes, your forefathers ate their children. You didn't know that though. You didn't know that though. This is a prophecy. This is a prophecy of your people. Yeah, the Israelites did. Yes, the Jews. Because they didn't have any food. They was in such a low estate that they sacrificed their children to eat, to stay alive. That prophecy was given at the same time it was given that we would worship wood and worship stone. The same time. It was given that we would worship wood and worship stone. Were we worshiping wood and stone then? No, it took thousands of years for that to happen. So now our people are walking around what in Mecca? The what? Or the, what's it called? A little bit of it is the cobblestone. A cobblestone, well, we exactly. Don't, we don't serve the cobblestone. When I look at photos of the cobblestone yeah, they, and what people do to are, it. They all go into it and they try to kiss it. Yes. Yes. You, you kiss it, but you don't serve it? Don't serve it. Okay. You show affection to it? You show affection. You understand? Yeah. You're, you're following something that you don't that, that you were taught by your oppressors. You understand? That that you, it's not your religion. That's not who your people come from. Those people enslaved your people. That's right. Alright? The prophecy you're fulfilling is that you would worship the wood and the stone. So you're going to be cursed from that if you don't come up out of it. You're going to be cursed. Okay. All right. We we about to wrap up. Yeah. We about to wrap up. Are y'all gonna be here? Do y'all come to all the football games? Nah, nah. We don't come to all the football games. We don't come to all. Well, maybe I'll be back. I'm gonna I'm gonna read up. I'm gonna read up. Who's in there? Kaya. Kaya. I'm gonna get a website. I'm back. I'm gonna have a better conversation. Better conversation. Are you gonna be trying to defend? Islam? Yeah, for sure. Why, why you got so much ties to Islam? Ties to Islam? Yeah. I mean, I you, you know so little about it, but you, you're, you're in so, you have a, a spirit on you to, 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 to fit that it's right. Why? I mean, before I took my jihad, I did the research and stuff like that. I like everything about it. I like how they live their life, how they do their morals are. So when I took my jihad, I took a vow. I hear y'all. Do, do you like how black people live their life? Do I like how black people live their life? It depends. We all got all that different black people. Black people as a whole? Yes, as a whole. I wish we could do better, but so you see hope in what they're doing more so than what we do. That, that's what you see. You see I see hope. I see hope in black people and what they're doing. No, you see hope in 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 Islam. And you, you wouldn't but, be following that if you didn't. You see hope in Arabs and what they're doing. Right. That's what you see hope in. I see hope in. I see yes. hope in you see hope in how their tenets, their customs, they where they pray, all the things you just subscribed to me. You see hope in that more so than you see in your own people. My own black people Muslim. Yes, black people. There's multiple black people that's Muslim. All different right, but they're not races, one though. But that's that's them in another culture. That's what he's saying is like so the they're taking from, from Islam. You know what I'm Right? There are the there is this group of black people Everybody. but they're Islamic and they're doing well, right? But we don't have our own culture. Like that, that it's not a common thing. They that is a group of black people who are doing well, right? And we all want that, but we're we're confused. You know what I think you like? Order instruction. You don't like order instruction? Uh here's mine. You can wrap up there. That's why you need order most black people that's attracted to Islam today are attracted to order and structure. If that's not what you're attracted to, help me understand what you're attracted to in that, in that religion. Because we just read in the dictionary that it's the religion of the era. We gotta break down to everything people of the era. Just because Arabs are the ones who somewhat founded it, that's what it says. If I, be, if I believe it's the one true religion, and I believe it's everything they say, no, 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 no,
truth to it. I gotta go back to it. Okay, see what I'm saying? That's still there, right? We've been educated by the same people that conspired against us. Yes. So, in that, how how are we going to raise people separate from this? What what would be the alternative? To it, you know, because their education is, in my opinion, very important, right? Of course, right. Where do we draw the line? Is, you know, above all, right? But there's also things that you need to know. And even you need to know these things in order to understand faith. You know what I mean? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. And so you need to know your uh, vocabulary. You need to be taught ABCs. You need to be taught math. Right. You need to be taught all these basic things. Right. Where do you draw the line? Right. Right? God's commandments. That's where we draw the line. God's commandments. That's where we draw the line. It's real simple. It's very, very, very simple. All right? So in school, right. we're educated. Right. We're taught uh, math. We're taught... Uh, geography. Sure. We're taught all of these things. But when there's a contradiction to what the Bible says, that's when you draw the line. Right. Because exactly. school may teach you, yeah. right? School may teach you that it's okay for a little boy to act like a little girl. Right. That might be a class about that. But we have to draw the line there. That's not acceptable because the scriptures tell us. In Second Corinthians chapter six, verse nine, I think Second Corinthians chapter ten, where it says that the feminine is not going to inherit the kingdom of God, right? So we draw the line with God's commandments. All right. So whenever you are at a crossroads, with school education is good. We need to be taught. Here's what you got. Book of First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Come on. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Are they teaching us, our children, how to fornicate? If so, we got to draw the line there. All right? We got to say, hey, no, my child isn't going to learn that. Right. My child is going to learn this. Oh, you're not going to allow me to educate my child to, 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 to keep him away from the things I don't want him to be taught? And for me to teach him the things that I want to teach him? All right, but I might have to take my child out of that school and educate him myself. Right? right. We may have to come together and teach our children what we want to know. But guess what? You still have a standard that's established by the government. And you have to teach them a certain amount of math, a certain amount of science. You have to do that. That's fine. But we still draw the line with God's commandments. Come on. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor what? Nor effeminate. Now today, they have classes in school that where it teaches a